Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Talk Universe. In today's episode, we're going to dive into the world of quantum mechanics experiments. Quantum physics has become incredibly popular, so much so that it's led to the development of various quantum courses and products. Some examples include quantum personal growth, quantum Sudoku, quantum fortune telling, and quantum pet communication. There's even a wide range of quantum underwear, energy patches, and quantum jewelry. Many of these courses and products claim that consciousness has the power to change the material world. We can connect with cosmic energy by adjusting mental resonance frequencies or utilizing quantum entanglement. Not only can this connection supposedly heals cancer and bring prosperity and wealth, but it can even help avoid traffic jams. The question of consciousness has always existed between science and philosophy, and it's become even more debated in the era of quantum mechanics. In this episode, we'll explore why consciousness has become linked to quantum mechanics and the scientific research behind this connection. Stay tuned as we delve into this fascinating topic. We often hear about the connection between quantum mechanics and consciousness. This might be why many personal growth courses and even metaphysical concepts use quantum mechanics as a foundation. But is quantum mechanics really like this? To understand how quantum mechanics relates to consciousness, we must look at one of the most famous quantum mechanics experiments. In this experiment, I have a piece of equipment with two slits, separated by a very short distance. We will shine a laser light through these two slits to see what happens. When the laser light hits the double slits, we can observe a pattern of bright and dark stripes on the wall behind it. This is related to wave properties we learned in high school physics. Where the peaks of two light waves meet, constructive interference occurs, creating the bright stripes. The dark stripes, on the other hand, are due to destructive interference, where the peaks and troughs of the light waves intersect, causing the light's effect to be canceled out. Historically, the double-slit interference experiment holds a very significant position. Let's continue with the same method for the rest of the article. In the early 19th century, British scientist Thomas Young, who was also known as the last person to know everything, used the double-slit experiment to prove that light is a wave. So what would happen if we used something other than waves in the double-slit experiment? What results would we see? Let's simulate this scenario and find out. On the experimental table, we have a marble launcher with two cardboard slits in the front and a piece of cardboard behind to record the landing points of the marbles. We'll shoot the marbles toward the slits and mark their final landing points. The more marks in the same position, the more marbles hit that spot. After launching 100 marbles, we can see that, aside from some marbles being blocked by the slits and unable to pass through, the marble's final landing points are mostly directly behind the two slits. This creates a distribution with two distinct clusters. Unlike the alternating bright and dark stripes observed in the double-slit interference experiment with light, so we can conclude that when using objects with a physical presence in a double-slit experiment, landing points will only accumulate behind the two slits. This is because the object can only pass through one slit at a time. And if the trajectory isn't correct, it may be blocked. In the case of waves, it's different. As long as the slits are of appropriate size, the waves can simultaneously pass through both slits and interfere with each other. This produces alternating bright and dark stripes. Waves and particles behave differently in a double-slit experiment. The experiments mentioned above may not seem too surprising, and it's not clear how they relate to quantum mechanics and consciousness. To truly reveal the uniqueness of these experiments, we need to look at the double-slit interference experiment with electrons. We know that electrons are one of the fundamental particles that make up atoms, and atoms compose everything in the world. You could say that electrons are an extremely small form of matter. In the double-slit interference experiment with electrons, scientists shoot one electron at a time toward the double slits. After launching many electrons, they observe the final distribution of the electron's landing points. 
Since electrons are tiny particles of matter, one might imagine that the results should be similar to those we obtained earlier with the marbles, right? Logically, electrons should accumulate in the areas directly behind the two slits. From the recorded footage of the experiment, it's hard to discern any clear pattern when there are only a few electrons. However, as the number of electrons increases, we gradually see a pattern of alternating bright and dark areas, similar to the interference stripes obtained when conducting the double-slit experiment with light. This result is quite puzzling. Intuitively, since electrons are fired one at a time, it seems unlikely that they could pass through both slits simultaneously like light waves and interfere with each other, producing alternating bright and dark stripes. Nevertheless, it's undeniable that when we conduct the double-slit experiment with electrons, the final result looks strikingly similar to interference stripes. This unexpected observation is baffling. To figure out what was happening, Scientists conducted further experiments by placing detectors next to the slits to confirm which slit the electrons were passing through and how they could interfere with each other after passing through the slits. Everyone thought the mystery would be solved. However, it seemed as if nature was mocking human intelligence. Scientists discovered that if they observed the electrons' movement paths, they would only see the electrons passing through one of the two slits and eventually accumulating behind the respective slits. In other words, the interference stripes disappeared. Since then, scientists have conducted countless similar experiments, all yielding the same results. If you measure the electron's path or exact position, interference stripes disappear. On the other hand, if you don't measure the electron's path or position, the double-slit experiment with electrons will produce interference stripes. Throughout the process, it's almost as if the electrons know they are being observed and adjust their behavior accordingly. Most people choose places no one can see them when they want to do something wrong. In contrast, when others are watching, we make sure our actions are appropriate. Quantum systems seem to behave similarly. The presence or absence of an observer directly affects the quantum system's state. However, this raises a question. What exactly counts as observation? If we place a detector next to the double slits but don't look at it, does that count as observation? If we don't use a detector and just observe with our eyes, does that count? What if no one is present during the entire detection process? Does that still count as an observation? This is the famous observation problem in quantum mechanics. In the early decades of quantum mechanics development, many aspects were still unclear, and the observation problem was one of them. Historically, some physicists seriously considered whether human consciousness must be involved in the process to constitute an observation. If that were the case, consciousness would hold a very special significance and seemingly imply that human consciousness could change the way the material world operates. As you can imagine, these speculations, originating from the observation problem in quantum mechanics, later caught the attention of some so-called spiritual teachers and mind-body-spirit authors. Consequently, various pseudoscientific claims promoting mental powers, healing, and meditation based on quantum mechanics principles or personal growth have emerged and have remained popular in recent years. On the other hand, the term quantum might evoke an image of cutting-edge science for many people. As a result, a myriad of products, even those having nothing to do with quantum mechanics, have been branded with quantum. Furthermore, product promotions often include nonsensical concepts such as quantum energy and quantum resonance. Alternatively, they misuse specialized quantum mechanics terms like quantum entanglement and quantum tunneling to endorse their products. It seems as if the mere presence of the word quantum guarantees quality, promising spiritual growth, improved health, and wish fulfillment. In reality, quantum mechanics is an evolving field of study, and our understanding continues to become more nuanced over time. Modern physicists generally do not believe that we can use consciousness to alter the material world, or that consciousness plays a role in observation. It could be said that human consciousness is irrelevant to observation. However, we will not yet delve into the modern viewpoint on the observation problem. In the upcoming episodes, we will start with basic knowledge and gradually progress. 
helping you grasp some key concepts in quantum mechanics. Only in the final episode of this series will we revisit the observation problem and introduce the advancements made in the field of quantum mechanics concerning this issue over the past few decades. That's it for this episode. This is Tech Talk Universe. See you next time.